Welcome to our YouTube video on diseases of the digestive system. In this video, we'll be discussing some of the most common diseases that affect the digestive system, including acid reflux, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, and irritable bowel to syndrome. We'll provide an overview of each disease, including the signs and symptoms, diagnosis and treatment options, and lifestyle tips to help manage the condition. We'll also discuss how to reduce your risk of developing digestive diseases. So, let's get started. Inflammatory bowel diseases are characterized by the inflammation of the intestinal walls. Ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease are the two most common types of inflammatory bowel diseases. In ulcerative colitis inflammation causes abscesses to form within the mucosa of the colon. These abscesses open the ulceration of the intestinal lining, leads to leaking pus, and blood. Ulcerations usually starts in the rectum and spreads backwards as it heals. Scarring and fibrosis can flatten the hostile folds. Crohn's disease can affect different areas in one or both intestines. Inflammation causes edema and abscesses throughout the GI wall that can affect nearby intestinal loops and other structures on the inner intestinal lining. Ulceration and patchy lymphoid areas emerge. Fibrosis thickens the wall and narrows the lumen in both the diseases. Intestinal wall inflammation and damage inhibits the absorption of the water and other nutrients leading to diarrhea. Constipation means feces retained in within the rectum as bowel movements occur irregularly and many other symptoms. Peptic ulcers are the lesions in the mucosal layer of the upper GI tract, usually in the stomach or duodenum. Aspirin, alcohol or other irritants may increase risk, but most common cause is infection from Helicobacter pylori bacteria, also known as H. pylori. The infection first inflames the mucosa and then toxins released by the bacteria then liquefies the thick mucus that normally protects the stomach and duodenum while these toxins also increases the HCL secretion from the organs, cells and glands. The increased acid penetrates the liquefied mucus and digests that part of the mucosa. The damage can inhibit mucus secreting cells, gradually leaving the area more vulnerable. Further digestion can deepen the ulcer to the muscle layer or perforate the GI wall. Symptoms of peptic ulcers include pain in digestion and nausea. Severe cases may involve GI bleeding and obstruction. Gastroesophageal reflux disease or GERD is commonly known as heartburn. It is a chronic condition that occurs when stomach acid leaks back up through the lower esophageal sphincter or IES. Normally the esophageal sphincter relaxes to pass swallowed food into the stomach and then contracts again to prevent backflow. If the reflex is weak, it fails to contract properly after passing the food down and acidic gastric juice leaks back into the esophagus. Abdominal pressure from pregnancy or obesity can also cause this reflux. The acidic juice destroys the mucus which protects the wall of the esophagus. This can lead to inflammation known as reflux esophagitis or esophageal ulcer. Diverticulitis is an inflammation or infection of small pouches that can form in the GI wall that is most common in patients ages 60 or older. The condition can occur anywhere in the GI tract, but it is most commonly found in the colon. At first the pouches form, which pushes the mucus lining into the muscle layers. Undigested food or fecal matter can then get trapped in the pouches. These trapped masses can cut off blood supply to the GI tissue, which creates vulnerability to the bacteria attacks and infection. This causes inflammation and results in the diverticulitis. Diverticulitis can cause intestinal obstruction inhibiting regular peristalsis which leads to constipation, nausea, vomiting, fever and chills and many more symptoms. Marasmus is a protein energy malnutrition deficiency disease. It is found in infants less than a year whose mother's milk is replaced too early by other foods with poor protein and calorie contents. This leads to extreme emaciation of body and thinning of limbs, dry skin and impaired growth of tissues. Growth and development of body, brain and mental faculties are impaired. Kwashi occur is also a protein energy malnutrition disease. It occurs from the replacement of mother's milk by a high calorie but low protein diet in a child more than one year in age. Having a diet that's mainly carbohydrates can leads to this condition. 
extensive edema and swelling of body parts are seen in kwashiorkor. Like Mirasmus, Kwashioka shows wasting of muscles, thinning of limbs, failure of growth and brain development. Thank you.